Hey, welcome to this radio video, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a band that is uh, not often talked about. It's one of those bands that uh, not a lot of people actually tune around, uh, often not really knowing what you will hear, and it's the Long Wave Band. Now, many portable receivers have the Long Wave Band included and um, general coverage receivers often start uh, at 100, 150 kilohertz uh, some even lower, my uh, Kenwood R5000 started at 30 kilohertz if I remember well so uh, what can you hear on the long wave band? Um, there's a, vi a variety of signals there and it's different if you're in North America or Europe uh, in Europe, there's basically a um, broadcast band in the long wave band. So uh, many, many stations in the very low frequencies uh, between 100 and to 300 kilohertz. So um, it is used for um, local broadcasts in Europe. In North America, long wave is never used for broadcasts. Uh, it actually is used mostly for NDBs or non-directional beacons. Uh, these are beacons that are uh, at airports and are used for uh, airplane navigation. Uh, they are not as used today as they were in the past because of all the new technologies, but they're still online and they're still on the air. So um, I just made a video where I tuned around non-directional beacons on my uh, receiver here and uh, to, to show you which ones I hear. Uh, if your radio tunes below 100 kilohertz, there is also a few times signal stations around the world that are very low in frequency. Um, there's uh, WWVL, uh, I believe it is. Um, I just don't remember the call exactly that is on 60 kilohertz and this is basically the uh, frequency where um, if you tune 60 kilohertz on your receiver it um, is a frequency where basically the uh, National Bureau of Standards in the United States sends its signal that synchronizes all these um, atomic clocks. If you've seen atomic clocks in uh, different uh, stores and wonder how they work basically to have a big antenna a big coil antenna in the uh, clock itself and it receives 60 kilohertz signals from WWV hell I'm trying to find it here WWV so um, that's WWVB sorry I made a, a mistake here so WWVB and uh, they are carrying 70 kilowatts ERP so it's a, quite a strong signal and it covers most of North America uh, and uh, that's what powers the atomic clocks that's, what's, uh, that's what make it, makes them synchronize perfectly um, there's also some data signals from different uh, areas here we have an example of a data signal I believe is 295 here we have a data signal. This is a special signal that's from uh, our maritime service on 295 uh, kilohertz. So, um, you know, all sorts of signals in North America, mix of uh, non directional beacons and um, these little digital signals in between. Uh, there's also a uh, Low band, um, be, um, kind of beacons, which are amateur beacons um, that are basically in the uh, what they call the loafers, and they're basically in the uh, 150 to 100 to 190. Uh, kilohertz range and so some stations actually have beacons here these are experimental amateur beacons I've 
I've never, never received any of these uh, experimental beacons. They are under part 15 of the FCC, which means that they're not allowed more than something like 100 milliwatts. So, uh, what's the best antenna for these frequencies? Well, you know, now I'm actually plugged in my uh, 102 inch whip, and that's not the best antenna for long wave. Uh, long wave, the best antenna you can have is something very long, like a beverage. A beverage is a very, very long piece of wire, uh, several, several hundred feet. So um, if you can go into uh, you know a uh, really a nature site where there's nobody around and you can actually uh, pull out two, three, four hundred feet of wire, uh, that is probably the best for long wave listening. And actually, uh, many many successful reception of uh, European broadcast stations in the low part of the long wave uh, here in North America um, with you know these really really long antennas um, it's the, the band is uh, referred to as the basement of the radio because it's just you know at the beginning of the radio spectrum and uh, there's lots of lots of stuff to listen to uh, there are even projects out there there is uh, what we call natural radio which listen to extremely low frequencies um, natural radio is uh, basically sounds of the earth because the earth kind of gives out these uh, all sorts of little whistles and uh, radio signals in the very very low frequencies typically it's more in the uh, you know, four, five, six kilohertz, very, very low uh, frequencies. And there's actually some uh, circuits out there that uh, let you build such um, radios. And uh, they typically receive what we call natural uh, signals made from the Earth itself. So, uh, that long wave band goes you know from the beginning of the spectrum up to um, technically about 500 kilohertz 500 kilohertz was once a uh, distress frequency um, it was one of the main frequencies used for sending a uh, distress call but uh, 500 kilohertz has been decommissioned as a uh, international call frequency as receivers do not um, really use much of that frequency band anymore. So turn around anywhere from uh, the beginning of the uh, long wave band as low as you can get and go up to 500 kilohertz and check out uh, the different signals in your area. Um, you never know what you can hear. And um, it's always interesting to find out new signals and if you're looking for some uh, beacon list, just type NDB beacon list, long wave beacons, uh, and you'll uh, get the non-directional uh, beacon lists that you can find on the web so you can identify from where a uh, special, you know, when a, a signal comes in. So uh, if you uh, receive, for example, uh, a non-directional non -directional beacon like this one, You'll hear the Morse code ID. So this is UL. UL is for the local airport here uh, on, in Montreal. And so if you, for example, just Google 248 kHz UL, you'll see, oh, UL beacon. And you also have probably some um, info of where it is located so um, try googling everything uh, of course google the uh, NDB beacon lists and you'll uh, actually have 
list of frequencies where you can ID and it's a great way to learn uh, Morse code also because uh, you will have uh, to uh, actually understand these letters in Morse code and of course if you're in Europe maybe tune around and try to find those long wave signals from different uh, broadcasters so I hope it helped and that uh, everybody learned a little more of what is long wave and uh, what you can hear and so uh, if you've got a portable receiver a lot of portable receivers actually have the long wave band included so why not tune around so hope you enjoyed the video 73